Any guesses as to what the first question is going to be about? No idea, mate. Good turnout, though. We, we had to cancel it last week. No one was interested in what I had to say. So it's obviously not about me, so go for it, mate. What's the latest with, with Harry Kane? He's sitting at the airport currently waiting to fly to Munich. Yeah, look, fair to say, I, I don't have a blow-by-blow -blow account of the whole thing, but uh, my understanding is that it's... Uh, you know, it's, it's progressed to the point where it looks like it's going to happen and that's kind of, uh, um, that's all the information I kind of have at the moment and, and from that perspective it at least gives us sort of some clarity um, unless something I've foreseen happens that we, we move forward without Harry. You need it to happen, don't you? You're right, the clarity is important so you can move forward. Better it's done sooner rather than later now we've reached that stage, I guess. No, I don't don't have feelings either way in terms of needing anything. It's just, like I said, from my perspective, it's just about understanding where we're at and where where the sort of um, status of it is. And the information I have at the moment is that the the deal is imminent. And um, like with all these things, obviously, until it happens, you you kind of uh, you know leave a little bit of leeway for yourself. But for the most part, um, you know, moving forward and, and certainly with training today and preparing for Brentford, we're, we're doing it without Harry. Tough decision for him in the end, it seems. How do you think he should be remembered? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I guess it's, it's best Harry speaks for himself in terms of the decision. But, look, there's no doubt he's one of the greats of this football club and that, that doesn't change, you know. He's, um, his record speaks for itself. He's standing amongst our supporters, stands for itself. Um, you know, um, I'm only new in the building, mate, but um, I'm certainly not a spokesman for um, this football club in the in the sense of you know proclaiming people's status. But I think it's fairly evident that uh, you know Harry Kane is will will always be one of the greats of this football club. Uh, 85 million pounds, up to maybe even a bit more than 100 million pounds coming to the club. You've got quality strikers, quality forward players in the building already, but Will he be looking for a like-for-like -like replacement for Harry? Oh, I don't think there's a like-for-like -like replacement for Harry, mate. Um, Position-wise, sorry. Oh, in terms of a striker, yeah. Um, no, look, again, we've been planning for this, fair to say, for a while. You know, I, I think it doesn't take too much investigative work to, to, to realise that, you know, this was going to happen. So we've been sort of planning for it to happen anyway so a lot of our business up till now is with that in mind so this doesn't change things dramatically from my perspective anyway um, in terms of what we're trying to build um, so um, there's still movement in the squad absolutely um, you know we've still got a you know, fairly big squad that we need to move out um, some players and I think some players will seek opportunities elsewhere and um, there's still you know what uh, three or so weeks to go in the transfer window so um, I think there'll still be movement, but that's not because you know Harry's gone. That that's always been in the plan. In terms of the 20 goals plus a season, man, have you given Daniel Levy a list? Uh, I don't think it works that way, mate. It's not um, you know it's not my wife handing me a shopping list to go down and get some milk and bread for the kids. Uh, like I said, we've been we've been sort of you know. Our whole strategy has been around the fact that you know Harry wasn't going to be around more than likely. So it's not like this is we've had that for a powwow this morning. And like, geez, what do we do? We knew it was coming, and we've been working towards that. And uh, you know, from my perspective, we're we're, we're preparing now for for Brentford, and uh, you know, there won't be anyone incoming between now and Sunday. So that's where my focus is. Thanks, thank you. Sam, hi Ange. Um, I know you said that you've been sort of planning this summer, knowing this deal is likely to happen, but you know, when the news broke yesterday, was there a fee had been accepted? Was there any part of you that thought Harry might say, no, I want to stay? Did you did you try and convince him to stay? This is his team, this is his home. I know Brian's a big club, but did you sense I, it? Again, again, like, you, I think if you're involved in the football business as long as I know, as I have, um, clubs aren't talking to each other unless the player knows about it. <laughs> we weren't negotiating with Wolfsburg for Mickey Van and then trying to figure out whether he wants to come to us. You know, all those kind of things are decided. So, um, you know, those conversations had. I had a conversation with Harry the first day I arrived, and, you know, he was upfront and honest, and I was the same. And, 
you know, you, you kind of get an indication there that he kind of made up his mind that if the clubs agreed that he would go, particularly if it was, you know, obviously his emphasis was before the first game. That was my preference as well. Um, and there's nothing been along the way that's sort of made me feel like there's anything other than this outcome. So, like I said, none of these things happen in isolation. You know, everyone's pretty clued in into what's going on. So, from my perspective, I hadn't received anything either from Harry or from the club or anyone else to suggest to me that anything had changed about his stance. And on James Madison, you lost first fans are happy to see him here at Tottenham. Was he a player that you wanted early on as soon as you got here and what you were expecting him to bring to this team? Yeah, I mean, he was you know, probably one of the first pieces of business we did. Yeah, I mean, he was available and, um, yeah, I was really excited to, to bring him into the group and knowing sort of what we needed to build here. And, and again, you know, in the back of my mind, knowing that, you know, if Harry was going to leave, that's a fair few goals walking out the door and you can't just replace that, I thought, with one player. And I think an area of the club that, you know, probably needed some bolstering was midfield threat in terms of goals. And that's what, you know, Matters provides some um, goals, assists. And, and if we're going to sort of cover the fact that, you know, Harry's gone and all the goals are leaving with him, we can we can certainly try and spread that out. And, and, and Matters is definitely... Um, you know, provides that, and he's been brilliant since he's coming. To be fair, he's been outstanding, not just you know in the games, but in the training and, and the way he's kind of embraced the club, and and um, you know the way he's kind of developed in the football uh, we want to play. And do you sense that despite you know it's been a, a difficult couple of years for Spurs and some negativity in particular last year, but do you feel as if you've you know despite Ken going, you've really sort of united all the fan base? You know, I think a lot of Spurs fans are new faces coming in. You know, you're, you're, you're an optimistic guy, you're very enthusiastic. I think Spurs fans have, have really taken to you early on. Do you feel as if you kind of, you know, got everyone aside early on and everyone seems really united going into the new season? Yeah, look, I, I think, um, you know, it probably belies the general impression of managers, but we're all eternal optimists, or else we wouldn't do this role, mate. <laughs> There's enough people telling you you can't do things that if you don't go into any challenge believing you can be successful and believing that you can bring success, then, you know, there's no point being in it. So, you know, I kind of, I was under no illusions of the enormity of the challenge, but at the same time, I was, you know, bullish in myself that we could we could accomplish something here. And um, and in terms of the supporters, you know, I've said all along, you know, they, they've got the right to feel the way they want to, and it's up to us to change that if we don't feel, you know, if there's a negativity amongst them, it's up to us to, to turn that around. It's not up to them to just sort of blindly... Um, they'll always, you know, have this eternal faith in their football club, but in terms of us, the, the people who represent it, uh, we've got to prove to them that there's something to get behind there and, um, you know, Sunday's an opportunity for us to, to begin to do that and then hopefully, um, you know, that positivity, um, you know, transfers to to our next home game and then, you know, because the energy that they provide the players will be enormous in us trying to achieve what we need to. Ali. Um, um, obviously, Harry's been wearing the armband uh, in your pre-season matches. Do you guys... Doesn't seem to be part of the plans. Have you decided on your captain going forward? Yeah, I have, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not telling you. No, no. Um, <laughs> no, look, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of go through that process um, tomorrow. Um, you know, as you said, I think, again, knowing that sort of Harry wasn't going to be here was something that, you know, I kind of had on my radar. Um, I'm not a massive one on sort of, you know, having an outstanding captain. I think leadership is very much um, a thing that's very transferable amongst the group. You know, your youngest player can, can show leadership skills, but it's about sort of creating a, a culture and environment um, that's driven by the players and, and the people you have in those kind of positions, captain or leaders, um, whatever sense of the word you want, I have to drive that and, and sort of, you know, that's that's been my you know, part of my brief here in the early bits, just to observe, you know, the players and how they interact and, you know, the, the kind of, um, you know, environment they've set for themselves and, and, and which players seem to take the lead in that and then, you know, I'll, I'll, we'll sort of go through the formalities of that. Probably tomorrow. Um, I'll rephrase this next question slightly. Is Sonny a, a strong candidate for that role? Well, it's not like you know, it's not like a leadership poll. We're not having votes or anything. It's just 
you know, there's there's obviously some some people here who, some players who have been here, who have already contributed outstandingly to the club. But again, it's not, for me, it's not just about experience. It's not just about playing ability. It's 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 as much about the person they are as anything else, and how it's going to represent us as a football club and how it's going to represent the playing group. So there's all kinds of things that um, will go into it. And um, you know, from my perspective, I. I'm really comfortable now that with the group we have here that we'll, we'll have a really strong leader out of it and, and, and hopefully some some lieutenants alongside him. Just a quick question about the future of another player. Even Perisic has been playing quite a lot for you in pre-season, obviously contributing a lot. Does he have a future on you? Yeah, I mean, I don't see any reason why he doesn't. Like I said, he, he's, he's been playing and he's been playing very well. Um, you, know, you know, obviously I've followed Ivan's career for a very long time and... Um, He's he's an absolute professional. He, the way he looks after himself physically, he's in unbelievable condition, and uh, and he's had a really strong preseason for us. You know, both um, in games, training. So yeah, he's you know, definitely uh, got a future with me uh, or with the football club, more importantly. Okay, we've only got a couple of minutes left of this section, so we go gentlemen in the suit, Alan <coughs> and George, please. Hi there, it's uh, Matt Gregory with BBC Sport. Um, you mentioned you had a conversation with Harry when you first arrived at the club. Obviously, you had a vision. Uh, he said his ambitions as well, but did you try and convince him to stay? No, I, I didn't see the point in that because um, whatever I was going to say was going to be irrelevant to what he felt being here for the last month. You know, I, I could, I could sort of plan this grand vision but I'm sure he's heard it all before it's what it's how people feel and, and you know what they see and perceive as they as they train with the group and the way the environment changes that, that has a bigger effect so for me that was more um, not that I was going to make a pitch for him but you know my feeling was you know what we'll get to know each other over the next month that's the best way to sort of navigate this early bit of um, you know the, our sort of relationship uh, as manager and player, um, but having said that, um, um, in my mind, after that initial conversation, it seemed to me that Frank, you know, Harry had sort of made up his mind that, as I said, if the clubs agreed, he would go. If not, he was also happy to stay. You know, it wasn't like he, um, you know, was kind of forcing it on me. You know, and he was very professional about it, and I tried to treat him with the respect that a player of his standing deserves.